first of all, we will be introducing ourselves. So, this is Kumari Tanushri. I'm a maintainer of Kaval and uh, I'm working since uh, one plus years uh, in VMware at as, uh, as a MTS3. Okay, so uh, he's my colleague Rohit Agrawal and he's also a maintainer of Kaval and uh, his MTS, uh, SMTS as, uh, at uh, VMware. So, today our topic is introduce, introduction to Kaval. So actually Kaval is an open source uh, project uh, which uh, recently got uh, adopted by CNCF as a uh, sandbox project and so Kaval has a collection of tools which helps to uh, which help us and from uh, writing a configuration for a Kubernetes application then building images and relocating those images and configuration to the places different places wherever we want to uh, managing those application on the cluster. So we will be talking few uh, of uh, there are a lot of tools in uh, Kaval, so we'll be talking only few of them today. Uh, first, I'll start with YTT. So, as I've said, well, like, when we decide to uh, manage our application on the clusters, so the first step what we uh, take is like writing uh, writing configuration for that application. So, let's an example, we have uh, one application and we have to write the configuration for that application for the different uh, environment. So, maybe it's easy to manage if it is a single application, but uh, if we have thousands of application and we have to write the configuration for all of them uh, to the different application, uh, sorry, different environment, so then it's a headache. So, here YTT is here to uh, reduce that task by templating those uh, configuration so uh, how, what, how it is uh, uh, helping us to configure those templates is like we can extract the values into uh, variables and we can extract the repetitive, uh, repetitive uh, code of YAML into a uh, functions. Uh, so this is how we can uh, write the template in YTT. Uh, I'll show you, you a demo as well after that. Uh, second thing is like uh, YTT is a complete YAML uh, templating tool. What does it mean is like it takes YAML as an input and then after rendering it uh, uh, gives a valid YAML as an output which we can use later as a uh, to deploy th that uh, YAML in our Kubernetes cluster. Also uh, the one exciting feature in uh, uh, yeah, YTT is YTT overlays. So, uh, for an example, if we have uh, some third party ML which we don't have permission to edit. So, in that case, we and we want to uh, update that YAML, it's like adding uh, some in, uh, extra information to that. So, that thing we can do through YTT YAML. So, it's like uh, templating and patching uh, we can do together just by one tool that is YTT. So, I'll go uh, forward to the demo. I think it's visible. Um, so, uh, for an example, uh, as a beginner, when we start writing a configuration, this is how we write the configuration to a simple application. So, this application has two resources, services and deployment. So, we can see there are two repetitive information. So, like for namespace this uh, and uh, name of the uh, application, we are using same name. This is the one and this is the one. So, this is repetitive. So, we can template this inform uh, information. So, how we are doing it in a YTT, I will be showing that. So, uh, here if you can see, uh, I have uh, added a functions for uh, namespace we can write a uh, function in uh, YTT. So, this is how we can write a function. This is like a modified version of a Starla uh, we are using in YTT. And another one is uh, uh, like we have uh, used a variable which I have defined in a different uh, file that I will be showing. So, this is another file where we have defined a uh, variable and we will be loading this file. We are actually loading here in this file and using the same variable. Uh, here as a name of the service or a name of the deployment. So, this is actually help us uh, to um, uh, write a reusable template which we can like write in a different file or uh, different module and we can reload it in our, our configuration file and uh, then uh, like say same information we can uh, use for different configurations as well for different applications. So, now uh, how YTT or like see the magic magic of YTT here. Uh, 
Now, as the output, we can see uh, the initial YAML what I have shown to you, or uh, the same output we got the here. So, namespace and the name of the application and services got updated. Yeah. So, I'm uh, handing over to uh, Rohit now. Uh, yeah, am I audible? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so we have seen one tool which is YTD, and now what we'll see is another tool which is CAP. So CAP is uh, nothing but we call it kubectl on steroids. So basically, it does few things uh, which make uh, life of a developer very easy. So one thing is it is dependency aware tool. For example, if you have CRDs or namespaces and then you are creating some resources in those namespaces, it will take care that uh, it will create the namespaces first and CRDs first, and then it will start deploying the CRs. And then other is it will wait until the resource converge to their desired state. So let me show that for you. So what I'll do here is, the YTT configuration which my friend Tanushri have written is what I will take as an input. So we see that it is showing that a deployment and service will be created and it is asking whether we should do that or not. So I will just say yes. So it is waiting until the deployment will be created. So from yesterday we have been seeing the demo where we create the deployment and then we uh, check uh, whether the deployment is up or not by using, uh, by doing kubectl get. So that we need not do anymore. Uh, yeah, so the other good benefit of CAP is that it can work even with the Helm template. So instead of just providing YTT as an input, you can even provide any other templating configuration tool. Um, yeah, let me just delete it now. So it is interactive, but at the same time, we can force our input also. So I have given hyphen Y. Uh, what that does is it will not wait for my input, it will take it as a yes. So now the application is deleted. Uh, next thing which I'll show is the cap controller. So cap controller is the packaging layer which we have on top of our, uh, uh, within the Carvel. So basically what happens now is that uh, you have created your application and you want to ship your application. So that we allow with the help of package and package repositories. So package repository is a collection of packages. And now, uh, so the, the software producers, they have to create the package, package repositories and ship to the end customer. So what I'll be showing you is the consumer flow, uh, how a consumer of a package, uh, how they can consume that. So we have a tool called kcontrol, uh, which is a short for cap controller. So if you do kcontrol, um, we have uh, certain commands called package repository add. I can just give some name. Let me give it KCT demo repo. And it, it basically asks the URL where that package repository is hosted. So it is a container. Uh, it is hosted in an OCI registry. So So again, we see that our package repository is getting added, and all of these are uh, CLI tools. So we'll just wait uh, until it gets added. Okay, so if you give the wrong name, it does fail, asking for the authorizations as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so we see that we are again following the same approach of uh, having the uh, output being displayed. And what I'll do is just to, uh, you can, then there are a bunch of commands which can help you to uh, show the package installation and all. Uh, yeah, just one second. I'll yeah, so a cap controller basically, uh, it's a, there are certain 
advantages of using it as a package management tool. The first one is uh, it's a server side package management tool, which means it will prevent any configuration drift which is happening on the cluster from the desired state uh, as compared to the actual state. And it, it does that periodically. So that uh, interval, you can set it up. And then it is more secure in the sense it is using service account name while installing a package. And uh, that way you can have more uh, control over uh, what all can be done on the cluster. And the GitOps support is there out of the box for cap controller. Uh, yeah. Uh, any questions and answers?